Ready to set up your first Wi-Fi network with Unify? Welcome to the Unihosted YouTube channel. My name is Fernando, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your SSID or Wi-Fi network on the Unify controller, and then deploy it to your access point. Are you ready? Let's begin. All right, so setting up your first SSID. Let's begin. One important thing that you should do before setting up the SSID, of course, you need an access point adopted to your controller. If you don't have any access point yet, please adopt the access point to your controller and then you will be able to uh, set up the SSID. Okay, so really, really important. I have over here a uh, brand new USX Plus ready to be provisioned with a uh, Wi-Fi and SSID network. Okay, all right, let's begin now. Let's go to settings uh, over here on my controller and we need to go to the first tab, which is the Wi-Fi tab. Okay, now name and password. This will be for your SSID. So I will use uh, something really simple for this demo and I will use the same thing for the name and password. Next option that we have over here, broadcasting APs. Uh, really, really good feature in, in case you have multiple access points and you don't want to broadcast the signal to all of your access points. You can specify to which one this SSID should be uh, assigned or should be broadcasting the signal, all right? Pretty, uh, very, very uh, cool feature. Really important if you don't want to broadcast all of your SSIDs and all of your access points and you have uh, you want to have more uh, granular control, all right? I only have one access point, so uh, I don't I cannot specify to which one. It will just give me the option to all. So if we want, we can just get over here uh, and add the Wi-Fi network and this will deploy the SSID. But I think we should uh, check a few of the options that I have uh, here at my controller, the advanced options, okay? So let's click this toggle. And now we have a lot of the advanced options for this SSID network. Uh, for a few of them, uh, I will create a separate video because I think they really deserve a few minutes uh, specifically to that feature because those are maybe not easy to set up. So uh, I will explain them briefly anyway, so at least you know uh, for what they are, all right? So first one, uh, private pre-share keys. So this option, in case you have multiple VLANs on your network, what you can do is just uh, have one SSID and create a specific password on that SSID for the VLAN that you have. So an example, if you have the, your main network, your guest network, and your IAT, uh, I, I, IoT, sorry, you can have the same SSID for all of them, but you will have a specific password for each of the networks. So it gives you like a granular control and basically you don't have to be broadcasting and managing a lot of SSIDs. However, something important to mention, if you activate this feature, you cannot use hotspot. And also the security protocol that is available for this feature is only WPA2, which is known to less, less secure. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but uh, something I think really, really important if you want to use this feature over here. Now, okay, let's continue with the next one. So hotspot 2.0. This is something that probably you will use for your uh, guest network. If you have authentication over there, you can set up a captive portal. Uh, you can also use Passpoint, which uh, I believe is used with Radius. Okay, so this is something again that we will cover on another video and, and we will do for a guest network. Uh, so the feature is over here in case you want to set it up. And next one, this is really, really important, Wi-Fi band. So right now you can see I have 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz enabled for this SSID that we are setting up. I don't have six because my access point doesn't have uh, six gigahertz. But something I think uh, that we should talk about is which one you should do, uh, use. So if you don't know the difference, basically 2.4 gigahertz will give you more coverage, but the speed is uh, slower than 5 gigahertz. 5 gigahertz, uh, it has less coverage, but the speed is really, really faster. So it really depends on what and where you are setting this up. Also, another thing, probably all of your devices are compatible with 2.4 gigahertz, but for 5, maybe not all of your devices are compatible with it. For example, that old printer that you may have uh, hanging over there that you're still using with Wi-Fi uh, may not have 5 gigahertz. So normally, uh, I'll give you an example for outdoors where you don't have a lot of interference. You may use 2.4 uh, gigahertz because it will give you more coverage and you can use it so you don't have issues with your coverage over there and you don't have to place a lot of access points in your outdoors. But for example, if you live in an apartment, something where you are um, very close to other access points or routers, you may choose just to use 5 gigahertz so you don't have a lot of interference. It's also the um, speed is way better than 2.4 uh, gigahertz, all right? Of course, the 2.4 gigahertz have more wall penetration than uh, for 5 gigahertz. So those are the key differences. And again, depends on the uh, your environment, depends on the uh, devices that you have. Uh, so really something that you can use uh, or, or do, I think really, really cool that maybe you want to set it up is create a network only for 2.4 gigahertz and maybe create another one uh, only for five gigahertz. Or if you don't need 2.4 gigahertz, you can just disable this one. So you may need to play with this depending on your environment and the devices that you have uh, and are going to connect to your Wi-Fi network, all right? Something that uh, it works with uh, the band that you are setting up in this case. Um, if I uncheck one of the bands, you can see that the band sharing uh, feature is grayed out. Why? Because this feature tells your device or client 
to the access point tells um, that needs to connect to five gigahertz if available and if it's possible so it helps with the uh, steering of the uh, band for your device now Nowadays, all the modern devices that you have, if they support 5 gigahertz, they also have mechanisms to decide uh, to which band connect. So sometimes if you are um, using this uh, two bands in the same SSID and you have connectivity issues, this is one of the things that you can disable if you want, because it may help with some of the connectivity issues that you maybe uh, have on your network and with your devices. All right. But again, if you can and if you don't need 2.4, maybe you can just have 5 gigahertz activated and that's it. All right. Let's continue now. We have high Wi-Fi name. Pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, if you want to hide your Wi-Fi, this is a feature that will uh, help you with it. And then you just need to enter the name of the SSID network manually. Uh, next one is client device uh, isolation. So this one is um, mostly used on guest networks. If we go over here, uh, it explains you what uh, what is what will do, but it will disable the communication between devices. That's why it's used in guest networks because you don't want people or the clients communicating with each other in guest networks. Maybe it's just for internet and that's it. So it's really, really used on those uh, kind of uh, SSIDs, guest SSIDs. It's not perfect, of course, if you have um, unified security gateway. There are other things that you can also do and set up over there to have more security in your guest network. But uh, if you don't have anything of that, and, or maybe you don't have any, any router that you can manage and set up uh, ACLs and, and rules and things like that, this will help you at least a little bit with um, security on your guest network. But again, it's not perfect. Now let's go uh, to the next one. And right now we are entering a field which all of the settings um, I will say first, keep it simple and don't activate them. OK, uh, the only one, uh, the ones that are ready by default, you should leave them by default. I will go over them. But uh, the ones that are not checked by default, uh, like these ones, you may want to first keep it simple. And depending on your environment and the functionalities of these features is where you want to test it. OK, you want to test to see if they help or not. Don't activate a lot of things when you're setting up your Wi-Fi network for the first time because you may have issues at the beginning. And of course, you don't want that. So, for example, uh, proxy ARP, your access point helps with the ARP um, and with broadcast. So uh, this is something that sometimes is used in bigger networks when you have a lot of con congestion over there. So your access point helps with this. Um, again, if you have a small network, maybe you don't even need it. That's why it's unchecked by default. OK, now BSS transition. This one is activated by default. Why? Because this one is roaming. This one is the one that helps you with roaming. If you have multiple access points and you're moving, OK, of course, your device will roam between the two access points and it will connect to another one when you're moving. So this is the feature that mainly helps with it. There's another one that I will mention a little bit later, but this is uh, very important. And that's why it's lived or checked by default. OK, next one. Uh, this one helps with the uh, battery life of your devices that are connected with Wi-Fi. Again, another one that Maybe if you don't care too much about battery life, don't consider this one. If you care, you can activate this one and test and see how it goes. OK, next one, fast roaming. This is the one that works with BSS uh, transition as well. Um, devices that helps with roaming. OK, helps with roaming. Uh, same with BSS. Now, really important, if your device is not compatible with your standard that is uh, showing up uh, right here, which is 802.11R, uh, this Wi-Fi standard, it's not something that your device will be uh, able to, to work with. So only compatible with devices that have that standard. All right. Uh, next one is Wi-Fi speed limit. This is how you can uh, limit or this is a way that you can limit the uh, speed of your clients. OK, this is per client. And to set this up, you need um, a profile. OK, so if we want to set it up, we just need to click over here. Right now, I don't have any profile, so I need to go to create a new profile. And here you can define the uh, bandwidth and upload the sorry, the download and upload or your uh, bandwidth limits OK, uh, for both. So I'll just close over here. So after you create it, you can just choose it and it will set up the limit. And again, this is per client. OK, now other settings we have here, multicast enhancements and multicast uh, and broadcast control. These two, according to Unify best practices, are settings or features that may help you if you have devices like Chromecast, if you have uh, Apple devices that uses uh, AirPlay or if you have uh, devices like Sonos speakers. OK, so these two uh, are, are features that you may want to activate them and see if they help with those kind of devices and connectivity for those kind of devices. OK, then we have all the features that we should leave automatic. Please don't touch uh, these two. We have Mac address filter and radius Mac authentication. OK, uh, and also a few other features. The very, very, very important one and I want to mention before uh, I wrap this up is security protocol. OK, by default, you can see we have WPA2, which is uh, the most standard one and it's less secure. So uh, really, really depends this on the kind of devices you have because uh, you have other options as well. And I really, really recommend if you can to use WPA3, but you may have devices that are not compatible with WPA3 and that they need WPA2. So depending on your environment is the one that you will use. Uh, Unify allows you to use a mix, so you can use this one. Uh, but again, if you can use WPA3, all right? And also you have the enterprise options, which you need a radio server to set them up. OK. All right. So I already uh, checked everything what I what I needed. And what I'm going to do right now is just click here on add Wi-Fi network. 
after a few seconds right now i see my wi-fi network in case i want to uh, delete it i can click here on manage and click over here and then i can remove the uh, wi-fi network that i created now, something that I wanted to show you, if we go to the devices, you can see the U6 Plus is getting ready. What this means, the Unify controller is sending the information about this new SSID so it can provision the uh, SSID and start broadcasting this uh, Wi-Fi network, okay? Take some time, a few seconds, you see uh, it was pretty, pretty fast, right? Now, we are setting this up for the first time, right? There is no device connected to this uh, network. So I think something uh, really important that I want to mention is if you are making changes, to any network, um, please make sure that you are not doing or anyone is doing anything important or critical. Why? When you do a change to an existing Wi-Fi network, the clients will disconnect for a few seconds maybe, but they will have a drop. So really, really important that if you're doing any changes to an existing Wi-Fi network, do them when you know that there is no critical um, action being uh, being done, okay? Really, really important. Again, this is a new network, so I don't have to care about any devices connected to it, but I think it was really, really uh, worth important to mention that uh, when you're doing changes over existing networks, make sure that there's nothing uh, critical running. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you found this video helpful, uh, please don't forget to hit the like button, uh, subscribe to our channel, and also turn on the notifications. Um, if you have any questions or any comments that you would like to add, feel free to uh, drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, I will create more videos where we will cover the other features or the features that we talked about uh, that I think they really deserve a proper video and a specific video for each feature. So hopefully I'll see you again in the Unihosted uh, video channel. And thank you so much for watching again. My name is Fernando, and I'll see you again on another Unihosted video. Bye-bye.